Welcome to this episode of The Mobile Classroom, the weekly podcast where we demonstrate today's most popular technologies. I'm James Messer, and in this episode, we're going to talk all about backing up your system. Backing up is so important that I named this episode Backup, Backup, Backup. It's something we always talk about in our industry. We need to back up, make sure you're backing up those files. Very often we find ourselves, well, we just didn't get around to setting up a backup. We didn't get around to configuring the system. We didn't go out and buy the hard drive that we would need for the backup process. But after today's episode, I'm hoping to give you a lot of different options and find the backup system that's perfect for what you're trying to do. If you're familiar with our podcast, then you may already know that some of our podcasts are for mobile members only. Some of our podcasts are absolutely free. And this one this week is one of our absolutely free mobile classroom podcasts. Whether you're a mobile member or not a mobile member, you'll still have access to this podcast. The difference is that mobile members will have access to this podcast in high resolution. So great 1280 by 720 high definition resolution that you could even play on a television if you wanted to. But it's nice on these higher end systems to be able to see that. If you'd like to get more information about becoming a mobile member and supporting this podcast, you can check out our website at themobileclassroom.com slash members. This week, we're going to talk a lot about backing up your system. There's so many different backup technologies, methodologies behind it. There's a lot of things built into the operating system we're going to look at. We're going to step through what some of those technologies might look like. We'll look at, at the Windows 7 system. A Windows 7 operating system has some really nice built-in backup functionality, some that you may not even realize were behind the scenes there. We'll look at taking advantage of those. And some of that includes both synchronizing files and versioning files so that you can take a file that's on your desktop and have it backed up and have multiple versions of the file backed up over time. If you wanted to go back to a version from last week or a version from two weeks ago, you could choose which one of those you wanted to go back up to. So it's, it's very nice to have that capability. Sometimes you need your entire system backed up. And we'll talk about doing disk images and why that's so useful and so important to have. We'll also talk about what is a relatively new technology in backups, which is off-site backups that are done through the cloud, through the internet. So you need nothing more than an internet connection, and your system and your important files will be backed up at some third-party facility that is off-site. You don't have to deal with any extra disks or anything extra in your system. You just simply connect to the internet, and you're backed up. We'll talk about all of this and much more in today's episode. Before we start demonstrating specific applications and backing up data and restoring data, I thought it would be good to step through where we are with backup technology these days. If you've been running Windows XP Service Pack 2 and later, and some of the other operating systems like Windows Vista and certainly Windows 7, you may be taking advantage of a technology called Volume Snapshot Service, or VSS. This is also called something called shadow copy. You may hear it referred to as that. So if you're looking at a backup program and it says it supports volume snapshot service or it supports shadow copy, these are some of the latest technologies that are available in the Windows operating system. This provides you with some great functionality when it comes to backing up systems. In the past, before this was available, on your Windows system, you could only back up files that were not in use. Again, you could only back up files and during the backup process not touch any of those files, or you'd have a problem trying to get access to the file. Well, now that with this new technology of VSS, whether a file is locked or not, which means it's in use or not, doesn't matter. If a file changes during the backup process, it doesn't matter. Windows is smart enough to recognize this, make a copy of that, a snapshot of that file, and that's what it backs up onto our backup medium, onto our hard drives, through the cloud, or wherever it's going. You just have to make sure that the applications that you're using to back up can take advantage of volume snapshot service or take advantage of the shadow copy capability. Older backup programs may not have this functionality. Almost all the new ones already have this built in. And if you aren't quite sure, just look at the backup program itself. Look at their website, because they will, they will definitely promote the fact that this supports VSS or this supports shadow copy. It's pretty important if you're on a Windows system and you're needing to back that up, whether you're on a desktop system or a server system, works in any of those technologies. Backing up your system is very, very important. But let's keep in mind that's only half the equation. Let's say you do a backup, and suddenly the hard drive that's in your system fails. Completely fails. It is inoperable. You're going to have to take that hard drive out and put in a brand new hard drive. Now, what do you do? 
Do you have everything you need to be able to restore everything to that hard drive? So as we're looking at these backup technologies, remember it's not just about the backup, it's also very much about the restore process. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of work right now to create the files and the disks and the boot media that you're going to need should something horrible happen to your system. And you have to put it somewhere safe. It's not any good if you've done backups all this time and when it becomes time to restore, you have no idea where your boot media is. That's a problem. So we're going to go through the methodology and the thoughts in mind with every single one of these backup methods of not only how do you back it up, but what are you going to need when you're ready to start restoring that information so it's right there and available in your system can get back up and running as quickly as possible. I'm going to first demonstrate a technology that comes in Windows 7. If you're running Windows Vista, it's very similar to the one in Windows Vista. It is very different than the one in Windows XP. The Windows XP one I'm going to set off to the side. We're not even going to demonstrate that one in this technology, primarily because the functionality of the built-in file synchronization and the built-in imaging and the built-in backup process in Windows Vista and in Windows 7 is really light years beyond. Windows XP. If you're running a Windows XP machine, it does have a backup and restore functionality in it, and it's quite capable at being able to do very broad, complete system backups, storing individual files even if you wanted it to. Uh, but it's a little bit outdated. It's a little bit clunky around the edges, still quite functional, works perfectly. But the one that comes in Windows Vista and Windows 7 is so nice and so functional. And as we step through this, you'll start to understand more about what I mean by that. Uh, in Windows 7 uh, and Windows XP and Windows Vista, you do have this built-in backup. You can back up individual files and directories and restore them. You can back up configurations. Maybe you just want to save occasionally the entire registry. You can configure your system to do that. And you can also take everything that's on your hard drive and create a duplicate of it, something called a disk image, and image your entire system off somewhere else so that if your entire system goes away, you can simply just recreate it. It's like recopying over your entire hard drive back to a new hard drive. And now you are exactly where you were before you left. You don't have to reinstall operating systems. You don't have to reinstall programs. You don't have to figure out where you left that media for the program you were using. It just makes a duplicate, an exact copy of your entire drive so that you can then restore an exact duplicate of your entire drive. If you're running Windows Vista or Windows 7, the program you're going to want to run is Backup and Restore. You can either go to your Start and just type in Backup, and Backup and Restore should pop up. I've made a copy of the icon and put it on my desktop here. So let's launch Backup and Restore. And it brings me up to a point where it talks about backing up or restoring my files. Now, I already have a backup process currently in place. And you can see that I have of this backup location that I've set up, which is an external hard drive via USB. This is a great thing to have, by the way. If you don't have an external USB hard drive, go out and get one. Go out and buy that hard drive and just have it available if only for your backups. It's very easy to plug in, get running, plug it into the power source, plug it into USB. Your system will automatically recognize it, and then you can use that for your backups. And that's what I'm using here. I don't have a lot of disk space available. It's a one terabyte hard drive. I've got about 43 gigs still left available on there. My backup is not very big. I've set up just a small backup so you can see what it's like to configure and set up a backup for this. There's actually a folder that's on my hard drive that I've set up to backup files. And the way that you do this, let's do something up now. I can backup and restore files from here. I'd like to change the settings of this just so you see what it's like. Now, this starts up Windows Backup. It's going to begin the process of doing this. And what's nice about Windows Backup, it takes you through this, this wizard. So you can simply step through enough. And it asks where you would like to save your backup. Ideally, this really wants to do a system image of your entire drive along with certain files or directories that you would like to keep versioned uh, information from this. Now you can see on all of these, I don't have enough free space on any of my disks to, to do a complete disk image. I'm going to have to fix that later today, clean information off of one of these drives and make enough room to do a full image because it's something that I'd like to do with the system. In the meantime, though, I've selected the H drive to store this information. I'll click Next. And it says, do we want Windows to choose what files and what directories it would like to set up. And ideally, that's what we would like because it will back up data files, libraries, the desktop, default Windows folders. It really creates an entire 
backup of all of your important files along with a complete system image. So this allows me not only to completely copy over everything so my drive is exactly the way it was the last time I imaged, but I'm also going to have separate files that I can go back in time and look at previous versions for. And that's really useful as well. In my case, just to give you an example of how to do this, I set up this just to let me choose a particular directory of files so I can give you an idea of what this looks like. And it's going to now pop up where I've got this information. If I can see data files, my computer, the only thing I've chosen on my computer is a single folder called backup. So if you're choosing this option, just keep in mind, you're going to need to know the structure and the layout of your hard drive. It might be just easy enough to tell the backup program, let Windows figure it out. It's going to pick the right things for you. But if you're somebody that really knows exactly the folder you'd like to back up or you'd like to add to what Windows is going to do already, go ahead and click whatever folder you would like to from this mix. And you can open up separate folders and even drill down into separate subdirectories if that's what you need to do. There's a, a link down here at the bottom, and this one's pretty important, that says include a system image of the drive. And it even tells you it's a copy of the drive required for Windows to run. If your computer suddenly the smoke comes billowing out of it and you need to replace the entire computer, that image is exactly what you're going to want to have. Now, in my case, I've just chosen the backups directory. So I'm going to click Next. And it says, great, we'll do that. We'll choose that. I've chosen every day at 5 to back up that directory. I can change that schedule, of course. Maybe I'd like it to be only once a week or only once a month. And I can choose exactly what day and what time I would like to run that. Well, that all sounds fine with me. Let's save our settings and exit. It's going to save this now, and it's going to run that settings whenever 5 o'clock comes around. It even tells me when it finished the last one. Now, what's interesting about this is that it doesn't just keep the last version of the file. Let me show you what I mean. This is my backup directory. I've just taken some of the XML files that I use to send my podcast feed out, and I've put them in here. I've got some test versions of those. I've got some production versions of those. I've done some editing on some of those. And there's not a lot in here, but it's just enough so I can give you a feel for what this is like. What's nice about the versioning aspect of this, now that it's done a few backups, is I can right mouse click on any of these, choose the properties for that file, and there is a tab here called Previous Versions. You may have even seen this before when looking at the properties of another file, but you've noticed it was blank. And it was blank because you never set up a backup. But if you do that, it's going to go back in time and figure out what files are there that I have available that I can now restore. And you can see the exact file versions are here. Here's one from yesterday at 12.7. And I can even go all the way back to 11.15 at 3.08 PM and look at that backup. Maybe that's the one I would like to see what's different between the one I have now and that one. I can click Restore. And it launches the restore process and says, I'm going to restore this. But by the way, there's a file that's already there. Would you like to copy and replace it? Would you like to not copy it at all? Or maybe you could copy and keep both files and put a parentheses 2 for that one. That sounds great. And just like that, my file's been restored. It was that easy. So if I cancel from this, I now have two of these files. It even has the same date and time from that one. So that now if I wanted to see more about that, I could I could even take the other one that's in there and restore that one as well and have three copies of this file now back on my hard drive. Look how easy that was to have file copying and synchronization, file versioning. And at any time, I could go back in here, pull that file out of there, and now work from what I had done in the past. Very easy to set up. And once you configure it so that it is always backing up that particular area or those particular files, you don't even have to think about it. That's a really great way to back up your system. We've talked about the backup being the first part of the equation. We also need to be able to restore data. And if we have created an entire image of my hard drive, and I lose the hard drive, and now I've gone to the store, I bought a new hard drive, I've put it in my system, now we're going to want to restore it. Well, if I don't have an operating system running, how am I supposed to restore anything? Well, fortunately, Microsoft's already thought of this. And Windows 7 is a really good example of this. You can do this in Windows Vista as well, is to launch the installation media for Windows 7. So grab your Windows 7 DVD and put it in your computer and start up your computer with your Windows 7 DVD. We're going to do that. I'm going to do it in a virtual mode so I can record it here and let you see it. But I have a hard drive that's in there already. We're going to start up what was a Windows XP system and start it up in this virtual mode. But this is as if you were looking at a brand new machine that was starting up automatically. And here is 
our Windows machine. It's loading some files. Even though this is my Windows XP named virtual machine, it's actually launching the Windows 7 DVD. And let's go full screen so this looks a little bit better. There we go. It's going to go through its normal load process. So this looks exactly the way it would if you were going to install Windows 7 from scratch. So that's not what we're going to do. We're going to restore a Windows 7 configuration. So we're going to want to have our hard drive available that's got our image on it. So that's probably already connected to this machine via USB. If it isn't, make sure you're plugging that in and having those files available. When Windows starts up, it'll give us the splash screen, and then we'll be presented with some options of what we can do to start up the system. Once we get started, it says Windows 7, uh, the language we want to install is English. We're going to use English for time and currency, and the keyboard is a US keyboard. And there is an install button there. I don't want to install Windows 7 from scratch on my new hard drive. I want to restore from my previous image. And so there's an option down here called Repair Your Computer. I'm going to click on that. We're going to get a few options available to us. It will step us through a default system recovery option to begin with that says we can use recovery tools to help fix problems using Windows and click an operating system to repair. And if there isn't an operating system listed, we may have to load additional drivers. That isn't something that's commonly done. But on this system, I don't have Windows 7 currently running, so it doesn't see anything. I want to now restore my computer using a system image that I created earlier. That's exactly what our image is. Let's click Next. And it's going to scan for image disks. I don't have an image on this machine. So one of the things that I can do is select an image from somewhere else. And we can specify the remote hard drive. We can configure it differently. It's going to find all the system images that are there. And once you find that, you simply select the image you want and tell it to begin. It'll take that entire image and copy it down to your new hard drive. What's nice about this is I don't have to worry about having a separate boot media, a separate key, a, a fob, or any type of flash drive to boot from. I don't need anything from a third party. It's all from the Windows configuration. So I can take my existing image, take my Windows boot drive, my Windows boot DVD, and I've got everything I need to restore this system. As an FYI, if we weren't going to do any type of imaging, I can hit Escape, and I get some other options here. I can do a startup repair, which fixes problems when Windows is just trying to get started. Maybe I don't need to restore anything. I just need to fix something in the operating system. I can also take, take Windows and restore from a certain point in time. Whenever you're doing an installation of a program, you may notice it occasionally will create a restore point. That's what that's referring to. It'll take the configuration of your machine and go back to a previous configuration. So if you install a bad driver, this may be a good way to get back to a previous configuration. This does not save and back up your files. This is only the configuration of Windows. The image recovery is what we were just doing. That does, of course, restore your files. There's also a memory diagnostic, and you can even go to a command prompt here. So if your system, you just installed some memory and it's acting a little bit odd. Maybe you should go ahead and run a test of the memory. And you can do that right from the startup DVD. In your system, you may want to do an image, but you may have other requirements. You may want to have an image file, but then be able to browse what's on there and restore individual files within a disk image. Or you'd like to have some flexibility to take that disk image, perhaps, and use other operating systems with that disk imaging software. The one that's built into Windows is great for Windows. But what if you also have a machine that's running Linux or some other operating system? You'd also like to make disk images of that. For those situations, we may want to use some disk imaging software from a third party. I have very specific requirements for my disk imaging software, and you probably should as well. My requirements are that it needs to be automated. I need to set it and forget about it. I need to walk away, and at 3 in the morning on a Sunday, it automatically does its disk image. And every other day, it simply backs up the files that have changed during that time frame. So I have this automated It's very important to me because I can't remember those things. I want it to be completely brainless so I don't even have to think about it anymore. I also want to be sure this disk imaging software doesn't require that I put in a CD or a DVD or a flash drive and that I have to reboot the system just to image it. As we've seen before, Microsoft Windows has technologies that allows us to do backups while the operating system is in use, while files are being used, while things are changing. So I want to be sure I'm taking advantage of those technologies. This also needs to be very easy to restore. I've got an entire image. I simply want to copy the image back to the hard drive. As I mentioned, the restore process, very important. 
almost as much, if not more important, than the backup process. So make sure that is very easy to do. Again, I don't want to have to deal with a lot of different boot media. I want it to be very simple to work. And I want to be able to restore the entire disk, which may consist of multiple partitions. I want to maybe take a single partition from the disk and restore it if I'd like to. Or maybe pick an individual file that's on an individual partition and restore it if I want to. Not all disk imaging software does all of these things. So you may have to look around to find the one that's right for what you're trying to do. When you start working with disk imaging software, it's a little more complex than working with something that's integrated into the operating system. We've already mentioned disks and partitions and separate files in those partitions. So you're probably going to need a little bit of a broader scope of how your hard drive is configured, what types of hard drives you have in your systems. So it may take a little bit of time to get up and running if you've never had to deal with managing hard drives like that before. The software you have in front of you right now is from a company called Paragon. And the reason I chose this one to demonstrate for you is for a couple of reasons. First, it meets all of those requirements that I had in there before. And they also have a free edition if you need one for personal use. What's nice about this is that this company not only makes this free version, but they make a corporate version, a higher end version. And what their idea is that if you use the free one and you like the free one you use, maybe this will also be the one you use at your place of business. Or maybe it's one that you'll use to back up something for someone else. It's a word of mouth. And it's a pretty interesting way to do it because this free edition is quite capable and it does all of those things we were talking about before. Not only has this capability to back up an image, but also easy to restore. Now you'll notice there's a lot on the screen here. Move some of these things up so we can see it. There's a lot of different drives. I have two hard drives within my laptop computer, and I have other external USB drives that are out on my system as well. So I mentioned you're going to need to know exactly the hard drives you have. Very often it's giving you model numbers of the drives, explaining you what number the drive is inside of your operating system. So make sure you're familiar because you don't want to back up or restore something that you don't need to back up or you don't want to restore something over a very good hard drive. That would be a very bad thing. You want to be especially careful when we're storing things. But I can back up an entire disk or partition. I can schedule a backup of a disk or partition. Important for me, again, hands off, set it and forget it, or perform a restoration. There's also other options here to, once I've already done a backup, maybe I would like to check the disks that I have, do an archive integrity to make sure that the backup file is really going to be good for restore. And this is a really good point, is that if you talk to anybody who's in a, a very medium to large size organization, and they're doing backups all the time, every day, they actually have a process where they will take, a very, uh, usually at random, one of the backups that they've done, and they'll restore it on a machine just to make sure that their process works, that their backups are being backed up properly, and that they're able to restore exactly what they expect to restore when they get that system up and running. So you can do some tests of that as well. Notice there's some other tools options on here to, to build recovery media because this program is not built into Windows. So one of the things that it says is that if you ever need to restore this, you can restore it using this media builder. Now, obviously, if your system does crash and you don't have this media builder, you're going to have to go to another machine. You're going to need to install this program, create the backup media so that you can then restore it on your system. Now, I can do it a couple different ways. What's nice about this is that this will restore the media. It'll have networking support. I can plug it into external firewire or USB disks. I can do DVD and, and CD burning from this. It has support for that. I can also create and use something called Windows PE, which allows me to boot up a very simple version of Windows to be able to restore this. And I can have it on a bootable CD or DVD or on a flash drive, which is really nice. If I click Next, I can even choose. What would I like to use, flash memory or DVD? I'd like to use flash memory. I'm going to grab a flash memory card and put it into my laptop. Here's my flash USB drive. Let's plug that into our system. Easier said than done. There we go. And I've now got my flash memory in. I'm going to use the typical standard recovery media with the program. It finds the flash drive I have in there, which is a one gig flash drive, 
But here's what's important about this. When we click Next, it says that all data on this flash drive will be erased. So we're really dedicating this flash drive just to have a recovery system. So if you have an old flash drive sitting around, that's perfect to use. Otherwise, you may want to use a DVD or a CD that you can burn to because that's a lot less expensive than having it on a USB drive. Well, that sounds good. So we're going to have it go through this process and have it so that it will copy everything we will ever need to restore the system right on that flash drive and have it available for later. The recovery media has been successfully created, and we click Finish. And it was that easy. Now I have some restoration media I can use. If anything ever goes wrong with this system, I can boot from that USB drive. Another nice thing I like about this particular program, it's very graphical. It's very easy for me to see what's going on. It has wizard set up. So if I want to back up a drive of mine, it says, welcome to the backup wizard. Great. And it asks, what would you like to back up? Remember I said you need to have some understanding of your drives and partitions and what's there? This is one of those reasons, is that this is very common in an imaging software, is that it has hard drives, tracks, boot records, the disks themselves, and the different partitions within the drive. Now, if you want to back up everything that's on a disk, it makes it easy. If I know that this is the drive I want to back up, I can click that, and it's going to choose all the other pieces. This is a 500 gig drive. The estimated archive size is 341.7 gig. And if you want to go into really detailed configuration settings, you could even choose exactly how you would like to use it. Would you like to set different compression types? Would you like to change how it is split on the drive? Put, assign a password to it, change the way that it copies the files. There's a lot of functionality here. So you can choose to go either very high level and just say back up the drive and put it here, or you can really get into a lot of very detailed views here so that you have complete control over the backup process. And when you're ready to restore, you'll know exactly what it's going to restore on your machine. This last backup type I want to show you is one we've already delved a little bit into, which is an off-site backup, backing up through the cloud over the internet to some third party that's somewhere else. And off-site backups can be extremely useful because occasionally something very drastic will happen at your home, and you'll not only not have your original system, your backup media might not be available. And that can cause a problem. Now, the things you need to keep track of or, or think about for off-site backup is that you need enough bandwidth to be able to do this. If you are on a very slow internet connection, you're on a satellite link, this is not the backup process for you. You're going to want to maybe have multiple drives and take your drives physically off-site in those scenarios. This usually, to back up your system or a large bulk of your system, usually is not really an overnight process. This might take days to get one full backup of your complete system done. And so this is not something that you want to be sure tomorrow you're backed up and you're protected. Not the case with off-site backup through the internet. What's great about this, though, is you never lose your data. It's always somewhere else. It's probably, in most cases, encrypted and stored at a different facility. So this is nice that we're never losing our data. What's also nice about this is that we can go to any machine to restore our files back. So very flexible for backup and restore. It also, in most cases, these third parties will do versioning for you. So today, we'll back up everything in your backup directory. Tomorrow, we'll also back up that, those files. And the third day, maybe we'll back them up again. It might keep a different version of that file for 30 days. Or it may keep 15 different versions of the file. It depends on the service that you choose to use. This automatic versioning process may take care of the cost of this completely, because now I know I can go back to something last week and pull that presentation or pull that document and have it available to me. What's not nice about this in most cases is that if I remove it from my hard drive, it usually is archived at this backup facility for 15 or 30 days. It depends on the type of service you're using. But once you delete it from your machine, the clock is ticking. It's going to time out and eventually be deleted from that off-site place. So this is only giving you access to what you have on your machine today. If next year you want to go back and pull that file, you want to pull tax records from two years ago, it's not going to be there anymore. If you deleted it from your hard drive, it's also eventually going to be deleted from that big storage that you have in the cloud. An important consideration for people that have external drives, that have uh, media files, movies, video, audio, those types of files and those types of disks generally are not backed up. Uh, this this is usually a bandwidth issue. Sometimes it's uh, more than that. But in this case, 
and the, the software that we're going to use, you don't back up external drives to this. And if you have a one terabyte external drive, you'd never have enough bandwidth out to those sites to do it anyway. This is really designed for the hard drive that is in your system. And unless you are needing more hard drive space, you increase the size of your hard drive in your system, it's not going to back up anything else. So something to keep in mind when you're using these off-site backup. There are many different off-site backup programs and services available. I'm going to show you one today called Mosey. Now, I have no relationship with the Paragon or Mosey or anybody else that you've seen here today. I've really just tried to pick things that would be low cost, very functional, in some cases, no cost. And Mosey is a good example of that. Mosey lets you back up two gigabytes of data onto their storage that they have off-site for free. No charge whatsoever. I don't have to sign up and give them a credit card. There's no, we're going to charge you after 30 days. It's really a quite a nice business model. So I can sign up. I can already start backing up data and I don't have to pay for anything. Now, if I get to a point where I need more than two gig of backup data, then at that point, maybe I'll pay for their $5 a month or $10 a month or whatever their service happens to be that will give me more data or unlimited data. Here's the Mosey website. Actually, their service $4.95 for unlimited data. Every different online service has different requirements for what they're doing. But as I mentioned, you can get 2 gig absolutely free right now and, and use that. I find that very useful, very functional for what I'm doing. So kind of like having that live sync capability, which again, we're not paying for. But on top of that, I've got the capability to expand it, automate, and have some of those in the cloud backup facilities available just by setting up a client on my desktop. This is the desktop client. It's very simple. It tells you about what Mosey is. If you want to select files for backup, I can simply choose my backup sets. And I have a few here that it's already configured for me. I've told Mosey to go and back up my Outlook and back up my Thunderbird email and contacts automatically. And I've set this up. In fact, you can see I have quite a bit. I have, I have almost 750 uh, meg of email and contacts in my Outlook. And I've used up 36.8 of that quota. So it won't be long until I'm already at the point where I'm, I'm really pushing the limits of my free Mosey. I think that's what they're, they're hoping for, isn't it? They're hoping to get that $5 a month from me. And maybe that's a good idea for what I'm doing. You can choose other parts. Maybe there's a specific file you'd like to go to. You could go into the file system itself and choose the files and directories, very much like we were doing with our other backup programs. You have lots of options here. For instance, under the General tab, it's going to alert me if the backup hasn't happened. It's going to warn me if I go over my quota. I can schedule this so that if my CPU is over 60% busy, maybe I'm, I've stepped away from my computer, but it's rendering a video. Mosey knows, wow, the CPU is really busy. Let's not go into doing a backup right now. And make sure that it waits 20 minutes before doing anything, and don't do more than two backups per day. So you've got some, some ways that you can configure times of day, when this happens, only when your system is idle, because there's nothing worse than working on your system and all of a sudden it begins to slow down because of an automated process. Mosey is configured so it's not going to do that on your system. Here's the History tab. You can see I've already backed up a couple onto my system. It tells me exactly what files. If I click on any one of them, it'll show me the files. And I can even choose any of these and choose what I'd like to do with it. Maybe I'd like to take certain files and change the settings for that file, look at configurations on my machine, or simply restore the file from a previous time and day. It's all built into this single client. It's very easy to use, very simple to understand what's going on, very useful. If you'd like to use Mosey, you can certainly go to mosey.com. If you'd like to go to my website, the mobile classroom slash Mosey, uh, that will also take you to a special link on Mosey that doesn't just give you two gig of online disk space for free. It gives you two and a half gig. Now, full disclosure here, they also give me half a gig if you were to do that. So if you want to help support the, the mobile classroom so I can store some of my files out there, be a nice thing for you to do as well. Again, if you don't want to do that, just go to mosey.com. I don't get any money for doing that or any other type of compensation from them. But just be something nice so that both of us can have uh, some advantages from using some of that disk space out there. Uh, and if you like Mosey, of course, you may choose that you'd like to use it. There are other services out there that also have other business models. Make sure you look and find the one that's right for you. Maybe look and see where they're located, where their disks are, the types of pricing that they have available. You may find some different services that have different options that might work better for you at work and at home or both. 
We've come to the end of another episode of the Mobile Classroom, and now I hope you feel comfortable enough to plug in your external USB drive and configure your operating system and back up your pictures and back up your videos and make sure that all of your critical information is stored at home and stored on the web so that you never lose any of those important files and documents. If you are online on Twitter, you can find us on twitter.com slash mobile classroom. If you're on Facebook like I am, you just type up in that search box, the mobile classroom, and we'll show up every time we do updates. It'll show up in your news feed there on Facebook. And of course, you can find any of our videos out on our website at themobileclassroom.com. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.